In this video, we're going to look at the entropy of expansion for an ideal gas. So our general problem is going to be the same that we've seen plenty of times before, right? We have a gas that's expanding from some initial volume VI to an, a final volume VF, right? And it's done so in an isothermal fashion. So the temperature is held constant. So we're looking at an isothermal reversible expansion for an ideal gas. Now, the new kind of question that we want to address is what's going to be the entropy change for such an expansion, right? Well, if we look at the plot of entropy change as a function of the ratio of the final volume to the initial volume, right? We see that as the volume expands, right? As we go through this expansion, um, the en entropy change increases in a logarithmic fashion. So we end up with a, a logarithmic uh, dependence of delta s on this ratio of the final and initial volume. Now why is that? Right? So let's investigate what we would do to calculate the entropy change for, gas, for such a gas expansion. Right? So uh, two initial clues here. Right? This is an ideal gas and it's isothermal. So since it's an ideal isothermal gas, we know that du is going to be equal to zero for any isothermal ideal gas. Now that has the obvious consequence on our first law of thermodynamics that dq and i'm going to put dq sub rev it's a reversible process so i'm just denoting that so we know that we can talk about the entropy of our system but uh, that means that the, uh, the heat transfer uh, for the reversible process is going to be equal to negative dw reversible right since we're dealing with a gas expansion we're just dealing with pressure volume work Right, so uh, we end up with dQ reversible being equal to P dV, right? Just our standard pressure volume work. Since we have this negative out front, that cancels with the negative in our usual work expression, and so we get dQ rev is equal to P dV. Okay, so now how do we calculate the entropy? So if, when calculating the entropy, all right, we're going to do dS is going to be equal to dq rev over the temperature right so in order to calculate our total change in entropy for our system right and i want to make that clear right now we're calculating the entropy for the system right uh, in order to calculate the entropy for our system we need to integrate right so we're going to do delta s is going to be equal to the integral from your initial to the final state of dq rev over t Right. So uh, first things first, since it's an isothermal process, we know that we can go ahead and take the temperature out of the integral. Right. So we can factor that guy out. So we have delta S is equal to one over T. Then our integral from initial to final state of DQ reversible. Right. So we go ahead and factor the temperature out since we know that that guy is going to be constant. Now, all we have to do is just plug in our expression for dq rev into the integral, right? So now we have delta s is equal to 1 over t. And I'll be more specific here. Now we have the final volume and initial volume as our limits of integration, pdv, right? So now all we have to do is integrate over the volume with our pressure expression. And we notice since it's an ideal gas, we're going to end up with 1 over t, integrate from initial to final volume of nrt over v dv right so now that we have this right we're almost at our expression for the entropy right what we can do here right we know we have uh the number of moles is constant r is a constant temperature is constant in this isothermal process so we factor all that out we end up with nr natural log VF over VI. Right, so this gives you the entropy change for your system. And you can see that we do get a logarithmic dependence, right, of the, um, of the entropy on this ratio of the final and initial volume, right? So it explains why we see this trend in our graph um, that looks like a rather logarithmic um, increase of the entropy with respect to this ratio, we see it here in our entropy expression for the ideal gas expansion, 
right? So that gives us the entropy for our system. What about the entropy for our surroundings, right? Let's kind of try to evaluate the second law of thermodynamics for this problem, right? So we have the entropy for our system. For our surroundings, right, we'll have delta S surroundings is going to be equal to the heat transfer into the surroundings over T. Well, our heat transfer for the surroundings is just going to be the negative of the heat transfer of our system, right? In accordance with the first law of thermodynamics, we know that Q of the surroundings should be equal to negative Q for the system, right? Now I'll, I'll put system here, right? But that's the same, uh, this is the same Q that we calculated here, right? So this is the same heat transfer that we just calculated for our reversible system, right? So what this means is that delta S for the surroundings is just going to be equal to negative NR LN VF over VI, right? So if we were to calculate delta S for the universe, right, delta S universe, would just be a sum of this expression and this one, right? So these are our two entropy changes. So delta S universe would just be zero, right? These two terms would cancel out and that would just give us zero for our delta S for the universe. So, and I know you're probably wondering, okay, well, the second law of thermodynamics says that there's always supposed to be a net increase in the um, in this entropy of the system, right? Well, that's for any real processes, right? Reversible processes don't really exist in reality, right? No process is ever really 100% reversible. So in reality, you'll always see an increase. But in these theoretical systems that we're looking at that are reversible, right, um, you will see a delta S universe equal to zero uh, in the case of those reversible processes, right? That's why when we looked at the Clausius inequality, right, it gave us this expression in accordance with the second law of thermodynamics, right? That's what we derived directly from the Clausius inequality. That's because that equality, um, greater than or equal to, that equality is accounting for the theoretical reversible processes. And then in any real processes, there'll always be an increase, a net increase in the entropy of the universe.